Jazzcast Pros. Let me tell you a secret. This is dedicated to all my brothers and sons. Everyone can have a child, but the one who plans a family versus have a family will prosper. Having a family means you did not plan it, but you have it, and you make the situation as good as it can get. But nothing beats the fact when you plan for a family. It's not that it's perfect and and you have the road paved with gold. Oh, no. It means that when you plan a family, you and your significant other had the understanding, the understanding of each other and communicated in in a way that we are as one. We are not just you and me. We get together and we had a good old time. And the end result of it is that we have a child now. Most of us go through abuse while through pregnancy because those are the times where there's the most stress. Child is about to come. I'm not where I want to be. I'm not prepared for this. This thing is coming and I don't know what to do and things are happening. This is what most of the abuse come true. And then afterwards, mothers, the expectation of allowing the man to be the father is far from, <laughs> far from reality. He can't change diapers. He can't feed the child. He can't hold the child most less more time. Sometimes he just withholding from the child, period. And to the fathers, a lot of times they just want to love their children. And they had unrealistic expectation of the mate of which they chose. You can't turn a hoe into a wife. And you can't make a wife into a hoe. Too much problems occur. Too many scenarios that can, that can happen. And too, far too many scenarios and <laughs> dimensions of problems that can happen. Unrealistic expectations is a dangerous thing. You might as well call it denial. But those who plan to have a family, they are compassionate. They are mindful. They are grateful of what they receive in this child to be. Greetings and welcome to Father Torch, the podcast to help you renew and renew fathers cope with the anxieties and stress of fatherhood so you can be the dad you wish you had. I'm your host, Ra, founder of Abimelech Foundation, an artist, and a father of nine. My mission is to help Help you to reclaim your power and ease your concerns about being a father in today's social climate. I am excited and I am pleasant and honored that you are here listening to me, Father Torch. You know, you know our slogan, you know our, mod, our motto, be the dad you wish you had. To my fans, continue to support and listen. I love you. I thank you and I appreciate it. I'd like you. to first shout out Creative Pizza for their sponsorship. I'd like to shout out the delicious and non-soggy crust of a personal pizza. Casual, fresh, and absolutely delicious. Try it out. Mention Father Torch, 766 Monroe Avenue. Folks, let's get on with our, our conversation today, this morning, or this evening, depending where you were, where in the world you are. I'd like to embark on the conversation of expectations. And nowadays, expectations are used very loosely, carelessly and irresponsibly. More so, we do it and live it every day without regards of the consequences of having such such understanding of the word itself. I'm going to give you a bit of um, myself in this equation. This is going to be a little personal for me and a little touch, and hopefully it will be a learning curve for you. I have recently come to aware of the consequences and uh, unrealistic views and understanding of expectations. I have put faith and love and time into many others and many people of my peers, older as my elders, as well as family. And I come to understand that the part of me being let down, hurt, or disappointed stems from my understanding of this word expectation. When we have an expectation of any kind, it is used it can be used negatively, and and it's supposed to be something of positivity. I had high expectations for people in position, people of high standard, at least in my view, people of moral and principles, people of um, great influence. But they wasn't genuine, and I knew they wasn't genuine. But because I put them in a space that they did not fit, I was disappointed of their behavior, their attributes their mannerism, right, the, the lack of uh, respect. And it disappointed me because they did not fit the place that I put them. 
And oftentimes, I know many of us have heard, heard this term before, when people talk and tell you who they are, believe them. When you have unrealistic expectations, it's hard to see that. And it's hard to even grasp that understanding or overstanding, really. It starts with you. It starts with you. And it starts with the fact of trust in you or faith in you. The faith in myself was was quite, I, I don't want to say low. I want to say misplaced. I want to say misplaced because I didn't think I was low, but I have my struggles, right? You know, I, I do struggle with depression, so I have my struggles. However, I was putting unrealistic expectations on people that wasn't worth the skin they was printed on. But because of the looks, the likes, and the, and the, and the influence and the, and the, you know, the impact of, uh, of their true lies, it, it, it caused me to unrealistically have expectation that they are good, they are willing, they are able to be what I want them to be. And this is nothing personal or attack to anyone, but the thing is, it starts with me first, and I have to overstand that. It starts with the trust in me. It starts with the trust and the faith in me with the creator, the creator of life, the creator of the breath I breathe. A lot of us would think about trust issues, and I, and I, and I know it's going to sound like I'm going off topic, but allow me to show you the circle of which I am speaking on. A lot of this stems from trust issues and abandonment. You see, when my father left, it left a gap in me. Despite the reason, despite the apology, despite anything else, it left a gap that it could never be filled with artificial things, which again stems from expectations. I wanted everything and anything to fill this void. I wanted to put in place something that I can believe in, someone I can trust, someone that I can put before me and can resolve or help me resolve even the smallest of things. And as men, again, we are taught to suppress our emotions and suppress our thoughts of things and never to reveal a vulnerability. Whatever form, fascist, or even oppressive way they are, they can be named. Those are the terms I'm using. The trust I had and the faith that I had was misled, and it was false. And I say this because the fact is the creator has embedded in me a lightness, a peace, and the spirit of him. And when you mistrust that, when you put that trust in something else, it weakens, dilutes, or completely shut down for the moment because it's no longer in use. So because I didn't have that father training, that self-esteem, that confidence to say that I was enough, my expectation in others was I was trying to fill in a space that was not meant for them. That mentorship, that elder, that friend, it can never be enough because they are not meant for that place. The trust factor in this is that if I didn't have faith in the creator and the abilities of which I am born with, the talents, the love and the worthiness that I am born with, inherited, then I will always be let down and I will and I will always be lost because the fact is I did not trust in the creator which given me the gift of these talents and abilities. So I didn't trust him enough to believe that I was worthy or had disabilities. So when I put my trust or expectations onto others, I always would feel lost or disappointed. And is spitted in the most high face or creator or whoever you want to be named, deemed higher or worthy of your praises. That's what the trust factor. The abandonment of it is that I couldn't trust because I always resulted that when I trust, it comes back to that trauma. Because any little thing, any 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 funny movements, it, it will result to disappointment. To most people, everybody has a different reaction. But to my reaction, it was always disappointment, questioning, anger, you name it. I work with a lot of fathers and I work with a lot of men, a lot of children or young men. And they have unrealistic expectations about themselves. Lack of worthiness and a lack of self-confidence that they were willing to do everything else but to work on themselves. They never had the confidence or the teaching or development from their father, the authority figure, to give them the ability or even the support to say, you're worthy. So some had to grow on their own and rely on whatever it, whatever helped survive or whatever helped them keep going. 
And no matter how bad or good it may be, the expectation of that is that I am not worthy. In one word, word, I'm not worthy. Because if my blood didn't want me, my expectation of anything else is, is, you know, less than. I say this to say fathers must be in the lives of their children and be allowed to be alive, be in the lives of their children because it helps develop that self-esteem, that discipline to know that you are worthy, to know that you are worth the love, the attention, the attributes, as well as the development so you can live on and, and prosper in your fulfillment in your purpose. I'm saying this because the fact is it took me a long time to recognize this in myself and recognize this as a whole. The thing I think about expectation is that it is your perception. It is your works, right? It's your, you know, your ability to see, feel, and have an impact in. I wanted to belong. Everyone does. Everybody wants to belong to something or someone great. Something that gives you motivation, something that gives you the the the, the charge, you know, that they know you want you can do it. When you first meet a girl, the expectation is, I mean, for most of us, <laughs> that's how fast you can take the drawers down. That's that that's not expectation. I know that's quick to say. For most of us, this is the one. She is the one. And most of us make this premature mistake because the fact is we didn't we didn't go through the trials and tribulations. We didn't go to the communication. We didn't get to know each other. We didn't get to build. We went straight to the draws. And we assume that this was enough. And the expectation is that you will be better and more than. Right? And when it's not fulfilled or completed, that's when the problems occur. The anger comes up, the trauma re- you know, reaffirms itself and you know, as you go, this this becomes a problem. Now, not for nothing, uh, expectation is, in itself is not a wicked thing. But it's something that must be earned, developed, practiced, and learned. And it, oftentimes, it comes from your father. But when a lot of us don't have that upbringing, we lack the confidence. And I'm not, I'm not talking about... Um, Lack of so much of a confidence that you can't do, you you can't um, believe in yourself. But the lack of confidence that you do other things to fulfill it, but temporary things in a permanent position. We start to fill it in with false love, any love, damaging love. I mean, you name it. We we start filling it in with things that don't mean nothing. We start putting people before ourselves. We forget about the creator and not understand that. The expectation in you should be always that you are willing to learn, that you are willing to thrive, that you're willing to develop, that you develop, you're willing to educate yourself so that you do better for yourself. So that is part of your survival, that is part of your growth, that is part of your adolescence, that is part of who you are. And especially as men, we are more visually and physically in this world of expectations and double standards. Because the expectation of a man is to be a father one day, is to be a, a provider, is to be a protector, is to be well overall fit, and most of all, love it. It sounds easy because it's said in you know, those five ways or it could be written down or even fantasized, but the reality is it's hard when you don't have the confidence in you. The expectation is unreal because the fact is you feel unworthy or you don't have the development or you feel that you're not enough. And it is there in this world nowadays the, the double and triple standards of if you're not a millionaire by 22, then you're doing something wrong. False and this propaganda in itself. Expectation goes a long way with discipline, self esteem, right? Confidence in your own abilities and your own development. And I say this because this is. This is Something that I had learned from my grandparents, the confidence in me, the creator in me. And I learned to trust the creator's ability and, and, and faith in me, one slash in him, because he doesn't need my faith. You see what I'm saying? He doesn't need my faith, but the creator have faith in me. I was born with a purpose. I was born not in iniquity. I was born with a purpose and I needed to know and have that purpose be fully recognized and developed. 
but my guardian was unable to do that. So instead, I filled it with sorrow, disparity. I filled it with anger, depression. I filled it with, with um, hopes of others, with faith lacking of me. So my expectation was unrealistic. My expectation will never be filled until I recognize me. Not no one's failure, not my father's failure, not, not the, you know, the world standards of things, but in me, that I can seek my truth and seek my abilities, that my world, my heaven, my dominions, my universe will set me free, will be liberating. Most of us are stuck. We are stuck because we don't have faith in us. And our expectation that we toss and throw to everyone else, as they say, cast your pearls to swine and they shit it out, pretty much the same. I gave into everyone else. I invested into everyone else. I, 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 I extended myself for everyone else, but not my family. I mean the one I create, you know, wife, children. So not the one I create, but I extended myself to everyone else and left myself not only just vulnerable, but empty. I left myself broken because my expectation that I would get it back, but that's unrealistic. Then I use words like, that's my man's, that's my loyalty. You know, he's going to be loyal or he's going to be, and it's a lie. Me, you can be doing the same work and we have two different expectations of this work. My expectation is to get rich fast. And your expectation could be, well, the learning curve and all that I can get with this, right? What's, what's, what's the comfortability of living I'm going to get with this particular type of work? But my work, my, my expectation is how fast can I get rich? What's the most I can get out of this and dip? Unrealistic expectations. A lot of us are are, are fathers not by plan, right? We, you know, we we had sex and it was unprotected, and well, it's established that your pull out game is weak and you, you have a child, right? However, when you plan, your expectation starts to develop a stronger sense of purpose for you. How am I gonna provide for this child? What's my plan to do such things? How will I get to that point? What is necessary of me to help with your development? All these are factored. All these are something that is your expectation helps you with. But I didn't have a plan. My expectation is false because, you know, my mom going to do this. My father going to do this. You know, my uncle's going to do this. I got friends and, you know, my girl's going to, she, she going to do the mother thing and, you know, and I'm going to be better than my father because, you know, I'm not going to do A, B, C, what he did. Unrealistic expectations. Because if you didn't learn from his mistake, how are you going to learn from yours and the lesson that needs to be learned? How are you going to provide for your child if all you can think about is the smaller things and not the whole things? Your expectation cannot happen because you did not plan and you did not invest in you. You didn't plan to have a family. You 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 plan to have a good time. You plan to connect and, and you and, and and do what you can do and get all the pleasure and fun you can, but you did not plan for a family. Your expectation was not there. It was unreal. From a personal note, I used to put too much faith and energy into others and not in myself. Now, I could be mad that they, I, that they did not return that energy to me. That is the most ignorant way of going about it or simple-minded way to do it. However, they didn't ask for my energy. They didn't take my energy. They didn't rob me of my energy. I gave that away. I gave that time and energy things that I cannot get back. And I did this willfully and mad because I feel stupid about it. I feel shamed. I feel disgrace and, and, and I feel disregard because I was not a priority in their lives, but I made them a priority in my life. Unrealistic expectations. Hey, if you're enjoying this episode, check out the Healthy Illness Podcast with me, Kelly Marie, as we build healthy relationships while living with mental health conditions. I'm diagnosed and live with borderline personality disorder, major depression, and generalized anxiety. And Despite those diagnoses, I've been able to live a full life. I have healthy relationships, a great career, and my mission is to help you do the same. So join me for Healthy Illness Podcast. New episodes every Monday on the Jazz Cast Pros Network found on the podcast player you're listening to right now. Be the light. What if you could create your own pizza, brick oven baked with unlimited veggies? 
Well, now you can at Creative Pizza, the only fast casual pizzeria in the city of Rochester. The dough is fresh. The sauce is homemade. Right now, you can try the Father Torch Lunch Special for just $5.99. Vegan meatball pizza with sexy cheese. Only at Creative Pizza, 766 Monroe Avenue, across from the Speedway. What will you create at creativepizza585.com? So my point is, folks, fathers especially, when you have children, the expectation is for them to do better than you and to begin where you left or stopped, to be in a better position than you when you started. The expectation and the means to get there and to do what you need to do, true you, will better them. The expectation of yourself and the expectation stems from the trust within you, the trust in the creator, knowing that you are not made to suffer. You are not created to suffer. The Most High, Jah, Rastafari, Allah, whoever you may deem worthy of calling, you are not made to suffer. You are not made to give away your gift and have unrealistic expectation on how it may come back to you. You must develop patience, discipline. You must grow your talent, your abilities, your power. You must discipline yourself Free your mind, liberation. That means control and deepen your thoughts of self-care, self-aware, and learn of lessons that life always, always teaches us. We must learn to be more acceptable of the things we cannot control and learn how to overcome them. Not stop, overcome them. We must learn how to be more than just simply there, simply waiting. We must do We must emphasize. We must be proactive. We must be doing things that would betterment of our children, much less betterment of ourselves, father and mother. We must really look to ourselves and control and master our thoughts, have more confidence in our abilities and ourselves, and expect that when we fall, not if, when we fall, we have a plan to get up. We have a plan to mourn. We have a plan to... Be happy. We have a plan how to build each other. And none of this is easy as one, two, three. And it's not so difficult that you cannot do this. It's require your work and your faith in your abilities. Works without faith, hope without faith is what? Dead. So unless you're planning on this being dead, peace be unto you. But if you are planning and you want to succeed in most and anything you do in your life, Have realistic expectations. Learn the rules of engagement. Learn to understand what it means to be realistic expectation in you. For us men or fathers, I can only speak the truth of the responsibility of shielding others and responsibilities of um, being aware, right? The determination without hesitation. That means basically we don't hesitate to protect what we love. So why why are you constantly hurting yourself then. If understanding that rule and engagement of how to have realistic expectation, why are we hurting ourselves? Having unrealistic expectation and expecting others to love us for us. You must love you. You must love yourself. You must know what you are feeling. Identify so you can do better. It's not simple. It's to require your work, your attention, and your proactiveness and reactiveness. All on a disciplined level. Humble, if you will. We must be approachable and we must be practical, I guess, or objective, you know, in some cases, depending on what it is. We must believe that we don't have trust issues. We have we have caution. We have awareness. That's not trust issue. Because trust issues means that you don't you don't believe in the creator and you don't believe in the power in you, the God in you. So I don't have trust issues. I'm going to say for me personally, I don't have trust issues. But I I do have awareness of others and awareness of what they can do to me or influence me to be. So I have discipline that will help me and humble me to see a bigger view than what's in front of me. I meet people where they're at, and that's that's in all realms. I meet you where you're at. My expectation of you is it, it, it depends on your act, your voice, 
your ability to communicate and what you're showing me. From one man to another, from one father to another, I will never, never take you as a liar because you are telling me who you are. If you're an idiot, that's what you want to be, and that's how you display yourself to me, no judgment. I won't treat you like an idiot. But you can carry on as you feel. But understand, in my space, in my realm, I will not tolerate it. I will dismiss you out of my presence or most simply move away. I would remove myself from things that cannot or will not benefit me. My expectation is to be amongst people or being amongst men or fathers who treat their children and, and, and significant others well. Because if they can treat them well, they can treat me well. My expectation of you is of your characteristics and your, your morals and your principle will match mine or even go higher. My expectation is when I meet you, man or woman, that you always tell me the truth of who you are. Why? Because the fact is my expectation of you is without judgment. Because I'm confident in who I am and I'm confident in what I'm willing to deal with, what I'm willing to, 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 to accept. My expectations won't allow me to accept nothing less of you but the best of you. And I will celebrate your life and I will celebrate your well-being every time. Fathers, mothers, sons and daughters, have realistic expectations of yourself. And I leave you with this acknowledgement. We as men, we, we tend to acknowledge the pain in us and we tend to guard it. But the pain sometimes is necessary. Sometimes. And it depends what it is. And I want you to just hear me out for a minute. It is our duty as fathers to acknowledge the pain in your goals while being truthful and liable is a prominent thing, right? It's something of honor. Letting go of our pride and humbling our ego strengthens our comprehension to be diverse and loving to ourselves. But it helps us to protect you. It helps us to love you. It helps us to see the bigger picture of things. Instead of us being paralyzed in ignorance, we must prioritize our ability to, to heal well and, and have well self-care of ourselves that our children can see how that works so they can learn how to heal themselves as well because just face it we can't be everywhere but we give them the lessons to do so and the practice they will do so also as men we must believe and trust the process this is not something that comes in, comes to you in seconds in moments and within the hour it's something that is practiced throughout your life every day. And we must practice the confidence it takes in yourself to bring to, to fruition the expectation and the realistic goals that you are set before you and your loved ones. We must do this without question. We must do this without hesitation. For some of us, it starts out painful. For some of us, it ends painful. But nonetheless, it's a lesson to be learned. And when I say painful now, I want to make sure we understand that it's not something of a broken arm or a loss of a death. But I understand those things could and sh could and might and will happen because it's part of life. It's part of the change, right? You know, the chain and the change and, you know, life. Uh, life promotes death and death promotes life pretty much in that regard. But we must be mindful. We must be humble. We must have confidence. And we must develop the discipline necessary to accept us as we are, to have un to have realistic expectations, excuse me, in ourselves, in the Creator, which which has which has ordained and inherited me, our ability, our gift, our blessings, that we can do better each time, every time. Master our thoughts, master our expectation, our love and feelings, and, and, and our projecting of who we are and our worthiness. But most of all, have love for ourselves that we can share that with our children. So our children can grow and know that this is what it looks like versus what T 
TV and the society and schools shows them the learning begins home. The expectation of what you feel and want for these children stands with you. You cannot send them in the world. Whether you pissed off or not, you cannot send them in the world and then have expectation that somehow the world's going to teach them how to be an adult, a black man or a black woman or a woman in general or a man in general. If you did not teach them the way to survive and how to be and how to have self-care and be aware of their mental health mm-hmm. and still have the expectation that somehow, some way, they're going to work it out, it doesn't work that way, nor does it help you. Because if you didn't teach them how to survive and teach them how to love themselves, you must going to live forever because you're going to forever provide for them and forever, you know, be teaching them the same lesson all the time without learning a damn thing. Please have a golden mind. And having a plan doesn't mean perfect. It just means you have a focused idea of what you want to do. You are mastering your thoughts and your ability for what you know and what you will experience, which is the trauma of growing, that you can pass that down to your children and they will have better understanding, comprehension, if you will, to life, to how and what's expected of them. How are they supposed to know what's expected of them if we do not teach them, talk to them, communicate with them, if I mean, and simply show them? Not everything needs to be shown physically. Words, right? Words, audio, visual, right? As well as, you know, action. Because we all know how action speaks louder than anything. Words especially. But words go deep because they echo. They run deep. So I say to you, my brothers and sisters, Take this lesson and apply it to your life and apply it to what you are dealing with. And look to yourself and ask yourself this question. Am I putting too much faith in others more than myself? Do I truly love myself if I'm consistently, again, investing in time in others than myself? This have nothing to be this have nothing to do with being selfish, excuse me. This have nothing to do with whether you 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 scared or you're not scared. Ask yourself these questions. And answer them in the honesty as you can. Is my confidence in my ability to do things comes from the lack of my father's presence or even having father in my life? Is it is the confidence that I have or lack thereof my expectations? So unrealistic that because I believe it or feel it, that I think it's real, that I'm always getting let down, whether it's to find the right man or find the right woman, whether it's to be the man or be the person that I, that someone says I am. Or are you confident enough to be truthful enough with yourself without weaponizing the truth? Be utterly truthful with the scenario or situation which you're in. What is your expectation of the one you love? Whether it be your children, your mate, especially of yourself. What's your expectation of when you get a job or have a job or in a job? What is your expectation of this job? Is it simply just to get the money from them? Is it get the skills so you can do your own? Or is it be comfortable in life? Your choice is yours. It's always your choice. Liberation is always the key. For when you're liberated, you have realistic expectation because you know of your abilities. You know your gift. You, you know of your powers. And no one can take it from you. That's my session tonight. I'm your host, Ra. Look for me on YouTube, I, I Hat Radio, you know, iTunes, Apple, if you will, uh, 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 Spotify. You know, look for me. Leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. And again, thank you for listening. And thank you for your time. And again, my comfort food, I'm saying it, Creative Pizza, 766 Monroe Avenue. I'm telling you, you won't be disappointed. Going near, 
shout out, I want Father Torch special, the Ross special. And trust me, doctor it any way you want to, create what you want as you want. You can't go wrong. It is the best casual, personal pizza you will ever find in the Rochester area. And let me know. Be blessed. Be kind. Always love yourself. Rastafari. Guidance. Jano. Bless it. Jazzcast Pros. Are you an entrepreneur at heart with the mind of a hustler? Then you found the perfect podcast to help you turn your side hustle into a profitable small business so that you can support yourself and your community. Welcome to the Heart of the Hustle podcast. I am your host, Coach Mo, an award winning serial entrepreneur with an unconventional business background. You can call me Motivation. I am a predicate felon who struggled to survive in the workforce, and I wanted a better quality of life for me and my family. And that's when I realized that entrepreneurship was my best course of action for reform. I am the owner of the Groom Room Men's Spa and Lounge, Rochester, New York's premier day spa for men's self-care and wellness. Over the pandemic, I began coaching struggling entrepreneurs inside my private Facebook group called Business Behaviors. With this podcast, my mission is to teach you all of the things I wish I knew while starting a business so that you can avoid the pitfalls of entrepreneurship and turn your passion into profits legally. Join me and expert guests as we cover topics such as business formation and legal entities. Should your company be a nonprofit or for profit? Mental wellness for CEOs, how to build community business credit and budgets, and how to get a return on your investment. Are you ready to elevate from a hustler's mindset to that of a CEO? Subscribe now so that you'll be the first to know when new episodes drop. The Heart of the Hustle podcast on the Jazzcast Pros Network. Over and out.